Today on Singles Court, Shania's got a great A B. She says Bert's behavior is slaughtering her career. I have been pulled off sales, okay? Yeah. I've been put on desk work. He claims he's just a rib tickler. I just make a joke about the ribs, about where they came from, or just a little joke. It's only a joke. And Jonathan wanted Bethany to meet the family. As soon as we pull up into the driveway, for no reason, and all of a sudden, she just gets out, freaks out, and leaves. But she minded that idea big time. I realized I wasn't ready for that. It was just too much. What'd you do today? She wasn't, excuse me, sorry. You weren't ready for that? Why couldn't you bring that up before? We can talk about it. Hi, I'm David Knight. Welcome to Singles Court, the number one show here on the Singles Broadcast Network. This is the place where singles come for help with all their messy relationship problems. And here's the woman who wants to straighten things out. She's an author. She's a lecturer. She's nationally syndicated relationship expert, Angela Siegel. Wow, David. I, I'm that trying was... to get up to the, the, the boxing promoter kind of I'm, level. You know? I'm liking that, because you know, yeah. it's sometimes like boxing. Sometimes, yeah. you know, like the referee. I understand that. You know, I had a really, really good time last night. Did I you? Was, I was doing the single mix-up thing, and it really worked. A single mix-up? In the mall. Really? Where's a better place to meet somebody than the mall? Uh, no, I think grocery store, possibly, but the mall the is... The mall's better. Okay. Because, see, you can get them to buy you something before you leave. Okay. That's an excellent idea. <laughs> <laughs> Groceries don't cut it. Okay, so, uh, well, today, Angela, we have Shania. Now, Shania has recently become a real estate agent. And Bert here, Bert works on the kill floor of a slaughterhouse. Yeah, believe it or not. Now, Shania claims that rising to the top of her profession, it requires uh, to be on the social scene a little bit. Now, whenever she takes Bert out, Bert makes uh, jokes about the slaughterhouse. And people are eating around him, and he still makes jokes about the slaughterhouse. Now, uh, I call this the case of blood, guts, and real estate. Hmm. Well, Shania, it sounds like you have a little meaty problem going on. What's the problem? To say the least, um, Bert and I have been together about two years, and it's gotten to a point where I am just at crisis level. I'm ready to, if I can't resolve this, just say goodbye. I, wow. Goodbye? I, mean, I what, have. What's going on? I have um, worked my butt off to get where I am. I'm. Who? I am sorry. Who? A real estate agent. Just finished my courses in January. Okay, so you're just starting but out. I'm starting out. Okay. And Bert has been behind me through that process. But this part of the job demands that I socialize. I got to go out. I got to meet people. Mm -hmm. I have to. I stood to by you the whole time. The whole time through this thing. Bert has I've stood, stood by, by me. You, you stood by Bert you. Bert has stood by me. And I but when we go out, it, all, it, it always comes up. Bert talks about where he works. That's fine. He works at a slaughterhouse, blah, blah, blah. Instead of saying, okay, I'm, I work at a slaughterhouse. I'm, I'm proud to work at a slaughterhouse. Or supervisor or something kind of polite, what, you know, and tasteful. What's wrong with a slaughterhouse, though? What is wrong with working at a slaughterhouse? You tell me. What's wrong with that? He makes I'm proud to be with that. He talks about, remember the time you made that joke about, like, cutting the roast? My jokes, it doesn't matter. I'm proud to be with that. You took the knife at the roast. Bert, question. It's distasteful. Okay, give me an example. Let's say you're at a barbecue and I'm eating, let's say, ribs. Since I'm from North Carolina, I'm eating ribs. What would you say to me? Because obviously, she, whatever you're saying, she doesn't like. So give me an example. Well, I just make a joke about the ribs, about where they came from, or just a little joke. It's I mean, only a joke. I mean, like what? Like where they came from? Like they come from a pig, we know that. Yeah. But like, what would you say? I would say, well, this, 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 these ribs came from a pig and all the people around here are pigs. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, I can see why that doesn't go crude. very it's well. It's crude. It's stupid. He, it's it's, it's so, a boorish. It's Bert totally is not like this. But it's only a joke, though. Bert, it's not, it's, it's, it's not it's funny. See, that's the problem funny. with a joke. If it's not funny, you know, my peers squirm. It's not a joke. And they look at me. They blame me. So, I mean, does he I do I look this? like the fool. Okay, but question, Shania. Because there's one good thing you can do is, like, not bring him. Well, what do you mean not bring me? What do you mean not bring me? It's expected they say bring your partner. Most people are married and they bring their husbands. What do you mean not bring me? No, but, I, if he, but if he does not something, the point. he and has who, to uh, prove uh, his who's behavior. Who's he going to bring instead of me? You know, who, uh, who are you going to bring instead of me? Who are you going to bring? 
Bird what? has made jokes Does about exactly boiling is? pig bottoms in large vats to get the meat off. So? You know? Okay, I say joke, maybe it's not joke, but he talks about the process of butchering and, you know, uh, people, are, they don't, they're eating is, filet mignon and okay. stuff like this. Bert. I can't even, you know, Shh. sushi is Shut out up. of the question. Shh. Bert, do you understand that if she's in a professional environment, your jokes aren't appropriate and that, that they cause her discomfort? Exactly. Yeah, but it, it's only a party. They get but, together, they no, think they're no, better no, than me. But you're not, you're not, no. I think you think they're better than you, which is why you decide to do that. No, they're not I better mean, than me. Think about the fact that, that you, you love her, you all live together, yes. so isn't there some sort of compromise where you could just not make the jokes at the, the function? No, no, I'm, I, it's just no. a joke. Okay, but it's I, not funny. That's, you know, we're right back where we started. It's and not, it's it's not, not funny, yeah, job. but... On the job. I was talking. I, I haven't was even talking. told Bert. I was this. talking. Bert, I haven't even told you. I haven't. I have been pulled off sales. Okay. Yeah. I've been put on desk work, and nobody and knows about thought. sales like that, I know about that, sales. That, okay, it, so you're in sales, and they pulled you off. Why? Is that because my fault? Is it, it my fault? It, it, Are you telling it, me that this, this is my it. fault? Are you telling me? Yes, that I, I am. Bert, I am. I know why you work in a slaughterhouse. Do you not, not even need to use weapons? You just use your mouth. Gosh. Okay, so you you got pulled off your job. But you think the reason was because you brought him? Well, I think he has affected my image. It's, what? it's and my it, yeah, it's I think, fault. It's I think the reason is because if my manager is there, what did your no, company it, say? Because typically, you tell me it's my fault. Gosh, you know, the, I would just drop dead if I was an animal. I mean, have, what does your company that's, that's say? That's his is, job. What does your company say? What have they said in terms of this is why you're being Nobody's late. gonna say anything else, right? Nobody says anything. I got a memo. I got a memo here. What's that? I got a memo. Uh, uh, uh. Should I see this? Yeah, I would. Uh, there What's it that? is. What's that, Bert? This is from no. your company. It basically says Where that... Where did you take that? Where did you get that? Shania. I found it. Shania. Shania. How could you Listen, find that? Listen, because memo? obviously you didn't bother to ask anybody about why you were being... No, I never showed him any memo. No, but here's my point. When you're, you're saying the reason that you got pushed off of your original job in sales was because of him, which to me would be unacceptable from an employer. So he brings in the proof from your company, the memo, that says basically... That's my proof. That is my private business. Yeah, yeah, no, you call it? that should not be in front of you right now because that is my... That, psh, Bert, is it you're, right? you're in front of me I can't right believe now. you, Bert. Shania, no, 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 you no, have to to the lowest of the low. No, that is, listen. The reason your company says that you were removed is because you weren't hitting the targets. No, Which no, makes no, no, sense. Does it say anything about her Does it say this, anything about no, her boyfriend? Is, it doesn't. No, no, It doesn't no, say anything no. about me in there. I told you. What? The company's going to say your boyfriend is a bore. No. Think about it. I mean, you have to take responsibility for two things. Number one, you're the one that brings them to the parties. It's your choice. Yes. Number two, yes. the fact that your company says you were not meeting their targets. How Listen, many, I'm going to challenge Shania, that, that Shania, memo. Shania, Shania, Shania. I'm not meeting the Shania. targets because of him. No, because of me. Because it's of you. Like the memo. Yes, yes, because I'm Let spending me. my time arguing with oh, my partner, okay. spending my okay. time fighting. You know, every time I come home, there's some big thing. You know, it's it's occupying my brain Shania. power. Okay, so maybe I'm sliding a bit. I Shania. don't even know. Maybe. I'm, I'm gonna maybe. I'm gonna challenge Shania. her. Let her maybe. I don't even think I'm Shania. Let me give you a little news flash. In business, if you can sell and make the money, they don't care if your boyfriend kills pigs in front of them if you're selling houses. So my question comes to, ah, before you open your mouth, my question to you is, how many houses did you sell last month? Zero. Okay. <laughs> it takes Let's more go than to a resolution. Month to sell a house. It Let's takes go. more Let's than a month. Let's and go to resolution. I'm done. I see. I told it takes more than a month. Come on. Blame will never allow you to improve. And in this case, Shania, you blame Bert for basically everything. You blamed him for his behavior. You blamed him for his jokes. You blamed him for the fact that you lost your job. The reality is, those were your choices. You made those choices. And when it comes to the job, it was based on your performance. That was the most important thing. All things that you can control. Bert, when I look at you, you know, you have to understand there's a time and place for everything. Everything has its time and its season. Your behavior was inappropriate, and I can understand her being upset about that. And even if you don't agree with her, out of respect to the relationship, you should have honored her request and curbed your performance. You know, blame is really the excuse that allows you to never improve. And in a relationship, it can be deadly. You know, when I look at this relationship, Shania, you fell short of the expectation of exceeding great, th of, of exceeding your own expectations because you were unwilling to take responsibility for everything. All you want to do is point the finger. And you did the same thing because you basically said, I'm going to do what I want no matter what and I don't really care what you say. 
So both of you were at fault here. And when I look at the relationship and I look at the future of the relationship, what I have to say to you is that what you're doing is you're both slaughtering it. Both of you are slaughtering it from different angles. And what's going to happen if you both continue to play the blame game, point fingers and forget that four of them are pointing back at you, when you look around and when it's all said and done, you're going to say what's left. And you know what's going to be left? A carcass. You know what that is, don't you? Okay. Well, that's that. The final word. Next, on Singles Court, Jonathan wanted Bethany to meet the family. For no reason, and all of a sudden, she just gets out, freaks out, and leaves. But she minded that idea so big time. I realized I wasn't ready for that. It was just too much. What'd you do? Too much. She, she wasn't, excuse me, you weren't ready for that? Why couldn't you bring that up before? Well, we could have talked tried, about but it this. Just, you know. All right, we're back with two more singles. Now, these people have a problem. And who better to deal with that than nationally syndicated relationship expert, Angela Siegel. <laughs> what do you Wait think? Huh? Ah, yeah, I like it, I like it, I like okay. it, I like okay. it. After that last story, I would normally say, I'm never eating meat again, but you know I'm having filet mignon tonight. Yeah, know. absolutely. Just got to move on. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I tell you, Angela, we have uh, Jonathan and Bethany. Jonathan owns a sporting goods store, and Bethany is a graphic designer. Now, he took the bold step of asking her to come over and meet his parents. Uh, now, there's no problem with this, it seemed, until they got there, and as soon as they were there, Bethany took off like a bat out of hell. She was gone. Now, uh, Bethany says things are just moving a little too quickly, but uh, Jonathan wants a real explanation. And I call this the case of the parent trap. Well, Jonathan, I guess she kind of bit the dust on you, huh? Yeah, what I'd happened? say so. I don't know. I thought everything was going great. You well, know? let's back up and then maybe oh. we'll figure it out. Okay, well, we've, we've been seeing each other for about two months now. And it's just been wonderful. I mean, it's been so good. And uh, I just thought it was time we get a little more serious. Maybe she should come and meet my parents. And she agreed. In fact, I think she was really interested in the idea. Yeah, but I told him that I was nervous, too. No, you didn't. I did. I, I was honest well, with you. That, about that. But, Bethany, I mean, that's pretty... Most yeah. people are well, yeah, nervous. Yeah, okay, so what's yeah. that mean? Yeah, yeah, that's irrelevant. The point is, she never said anything that indicated what her reaction would be when we got there. We drove all the way there. She even baked a cake for the event. I thought she was that's excited. That's a good thing. I like that you did that. Yeah. Bring the cake. That's good. Sure. Cook you. Really, so. yeah. That's good. But then, as soon as we pull up into the driveway, for no reason, and all of a sudden, she just gets out, freaks out, and leaves. Walks out of the driveway. I don't even know how she got home. How for did, no reason. How I did just, you get home? You know, it... <laughs> what did you do, like run down the street? I mean, where'd you go? No, I knew where I was. I, well, I, I'm sort of familiar with the neighborhood, but um, yeah, I just took a bus. I, I took a bus. I, it was just... Freaky! It just freaked me out. I saw the house, and it was like I had the cake. She saw and the, the house, and, and she I saw some ugly like, lawn ornaments, no, and she oh, thought that my parents were too tacky for her to meet. Is that Is it? That's true? completely ridiculous. That has nothing to do with it. I was but totally they do have, scared. They do have tacky lawn ornaments. I hope they don't have the gnomes. Honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember the lawn ornaments. Gnome. I remember Seven the house, dwarfs? and I said they have a gnome. They're suburban parents. I mean, they, they don't have. Oh, it's not. They don't have like a black man holding a lantern, do they? No, no. Because I would leave if that was the case. Okay, so you, are, so you leave because they, yeah. is that because they have tacky, like, things no, in New York? No, that had nothing to do with it. I just got really scared. We're, we were there, and it just suddenly dawned on me that this was a huge thing for him, and he talks about his parents, and they're really close, and it just... So my question is... I just realized I wasn't ready for that. It was just too much... What'd you do too with the cake? She, she wasn't... Excuse me, sorry. You, you weren't ready for that? Why couldn't you bring that up before? Well, we could have talked tried, about this. Just, you know, I mean, I'm trying to I picture this. Wait a minute, listen. I'm trying to picture this. You're in the car. You're in the driveway. You have a cake in your lap. Mm -hmm. You run. Like, what'd you do with the cake? What'd you say to him? I honestly don't remember. I have no recollection of what I did. Well, she what didn't say much of anything. She just got out and said, I can't uh, do this, walked down the driveway and left. Yeah. I'm standing there trying to explain to my poor mother, who is up all night cooking, looking very forward to meeting you. She's standing in the driveway. She doesn't know what's going on. Uh, yeah. I have to make up some explanation. You have a cake in, okay. in okay. car, right? Uh, I'm stuck with the cake, yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry, can't you tell? Which wasn't that good, either. <laughs> I used to babysit <laughs> Jonathan. What? JC, yeah, that's... So you wait a minute. That's, so, uh, you know, this is so ridiculous. Okay, wait a minute. I, no, used I agree with you on one thing. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but let's back up and try and figure out... You used to babysit him. He so was 10 and I was 15. And so honest to God, that? this was oh, a 10-year-old pervert. It was... 
Oh my God, I totally had flashbacks. I saw the house. I remembered babysitting him. He used to call me Beth. He had to pick boogers out of his nose and chase excuse, me excuse around. Me, excuse me, He used to take him upstairs so, and he'd be feeling me up. Here. He was so creepy. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I've been dating this guy for a month. Bethy? Oh my God. You're Bethy? Did you know that this was your yes. babysitter? Chester? No. What? My... I'm sorry. And besides, what you said was wrong, but it's starting to make sense. Oh, she was the most irresponsible babysitter oh, I have ever seen. A, that compares to being a 10-year-old pervert. Well, ten year old pervert. Well, yeah, pervert. I was just copying what I saw your boyfriend doing. Oh, yeah, she used to see this metal head. He used Wait to a minute, talk let's, about let's, this. I can't believe you were my babysitter. Oh, let's get some perspective on this, because obviously the two of you are like surprised. I'm surprised. <laughs> Give me an eye. Okay, now you did not know she was your babysitter. But no. apparently the experience you two had between Babysitter and Babysitty uh, was not a very good one. So how do you remember Bethy? Well, I, it was a long time ago, but uh, all I can recall is her putting me to bed early. I mean, she's supposed to be looking after me. Instead, she'd have her boyfriends over doing I don't know what. I had to put him to bed early because he drove me so nuts chasing me around the house. So how you had to put him to bed early so you could raid the fridge and oh, go smoke God's in the sake. basement, oh, which is why she got you know, fired by my parents. Uh, One, let me give you a little news flash as you grow up. You know, you remember things as a 10-year-old. That doesn't mean that's how they were. You're an adult now. So that, everything you're saying is that from a 10-year-old's perspective, you know, going to bed early when you're 10 is different than going to bed early when you're 17 and when you're 35, et cetera. Bethy, I don't understand your behavior in terms of acting like a, I don't know what, running. I mean, what, what is that about? What am I going to do? I'm going to meet his parents. <laughs> we get to the house, they're gonna going to know who I now. am. Like, okay, <laughs> so? So, I mean, they, they did fire me. I mean, it would have been, it would have been completely What, completely an opportunity? An I, opportunity for you to say I've grown up and I, I know what I did wrong? Gee, why would I want to do that? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. I don't want to meet his parents you now. Don't I don't even want to be. So, you, so you, let me make sure I understand you correctly. You liked him up until the I point I liked him up until that point. Now I can't were. even look at him, but I see the 10-year-old the brat that used to. But, but think about who, whose loss is that? I mean, evidently, you all had a relationship, and it was going well. Now you know who his parents are. You know who he was. He knows who you were. Tell me why you can't, there can't be a now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Why were you fired? That, I mean, that it, it causes such a horrible, uh, just a horrible idea that you can't even move on with your life. Why were you fired? For smoking in the basement. <laughs> okay. That's a good reason to fire a babysitter who's 17. Not a good reason not to have a relationship with somebody when you're 25. Now you know. So what are you gonna, so what are you gonna do? I don't what know. What are you gonna do, Jonathan? Think about it, JC. What do you go by now? Jonathan. Okay, Jonathan. What are you gonna do about it? I mean, you're, you guys are just supposed to be mature adults. Yeah, well, it's a little complicated. I mean, the next logical step to me was for her to meet my parents. If she does now, she's gonna give them a heart attack. Why? Because they can't... Think about it. She was 17. She's 25. Am I supposed to explain that to my parents? You shouldn't have to if they're parents. You know, what, are you gonna, what do you want to do now? Besides run, because running is not the answer. Yeah. That, this is the part where you answer the question. Yeah, I know. I, I came here thinking that, that we could resolve it. I came here thinking that you know, it, you it could be worked it. out, but, it, but it then can. I saw him and it just, I don't know. I don't know if I can get by that. that, that what, the, the opportunity to make amends for something that you did? I have to go to resolution. You guys are tripping. You can't run from your past. You know, Jonathan, Bethany stumped you here today, and you didn't know when you found out something you didn't know. Well, now you know. Um, it's possible that she's not the same 17-year-old because you're not the same 10-year-old. So, as you know, people grow up, they change. You just need to make sure that your mind remains open to that. You know, Bethany, you can't continue to run. At some point, you have to stop and say, okay, I need to realize that I've grown up and some of the people that I've hurt, I need to go back and make amends to. People make mistakes, everybody does. Teenagers make even more of them. That's why we get older, so it gives us an opportunity to take our experiences and turn them into better things. So you got caught smoking in the basement. That's not the best thing in the world for a teenager to do, but I'm sure his parents would be happy to know that you've grown into a responsible adult and would share in your successes and be glad to know that you've made something good out of yourself. You just didn't give them a chance. You know, the past has a way of catching up to you, no matter how fast you run. In this situation, both of you have a past, 
and it's come together. And I think instead of looking at it as being a negative, you need to look at it as a positive. You're both adults now, so stop acting like children and realize that if you're going to have a mature relationship, then it needs to be a mature relationship. Part of that comes in the admission of the past, but it also comes in looking towards the future, because you never know. The hand that rocks the cradle could in fact be the hand that rocks your world. And that's that, the final word. Well, that's it for another episode of Singles Court. You know, today's singles brought back a lot of memories. I remember my babysitter, we, uh, we used to eat hot dogs together. You know what she used to call me, Angela? I'm scared to ask you. Boots. Because I used to wear these big rubber boots when I was a little kid, all around the house. It's Boy, a family Jody. show. I know, just the memories. <laughs> this is not a commercial for fine <sighs> Well, that's okay. it for Singles Court, the <laughs> final word for singles.